the way you figure that out, the way you figure out if it's horizontal or if it's vertical, is you graph the information that they give you. This says, write in standard form an equation of ellipse that has a major axis of length 10. Okay, major axis. Only thing I know about major axis is that the major axis is the one that goes uh, the long ways. It's the biggest axis of the ellipse. That doesn't tell me anything about its graph. I go over to the foci. Um, that tells me something about its graph. I can graph points like that. And so I go over to negative 4, 0, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. And positive 4, 0, which is right there. So here are two focus points. So now, do I know if this is a horizontal or a vertical ellipse? Yes, yes I, know if it's, I know that it's horizontal because the focus points are on the major axis. <clears throat> so I know what my graph looks like, or my equation. My equation is going to look like this. It's going to have a fraction and another fraction that add together and equal 1. One's going to have x squared, one's going to have a y squared. I don't have to worry about h and k because it's centered at the origin. I can tell that, one, just because we're in 4.4, and two, because if I draw a line between the focus points, the middle is going to be your center. We know that because we know what ellipse, ellipse graphs look like. So now, do I know these numbers right here? How can I figure these denominators out? How can I do that? Square what? The foci? If I square the distance of the foci, uh, do you guys remember the letter that we used to represent that? Yeah, no, no oh, that's for um, parabolas, you're right. We use P for parabolas, but for the focus points on ellipses and hyperbolas, we use C. C goes from that to that. So it's a distance of c. And we know that c, in this case, equals 4. So we know that c squared equals 16. But that doesn't help me. Because these are supposed to be a squared, and that's supposed to be b squared. There's another piece of information that we haven't used yet. And that's the major axis. Now that we know that it goes this way, and we know that the focus points are on the major axis, we can graph the vertices. Because it's of length 10, we know that we're going to start in the center and we're going to go out 10 this way and out 10 that way on the same axis as the focus points. Not 10, I'm sorry, 5. We've got to split it in half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so I graph a point right here. There's your vertice. And then we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that way. Graph a point there, there's your other vertice. So this is your, your major axis. And now you can draw a rough sketch of your ellipse. Now this ellipse isn't exact and actually it might not be correct. And the reason why it might not be correct is because I don't have my co-vertices up. I don't know if my co-vertices right here or if it's higher. Um, I just know it can't be greater than 5. And I'm going to answer that question in a second. So this is your major axis of length 10. The length of A from here to here equals 5 because it's half of it. So what do I put underneath the x squared? Yep. So I had the 25... I know what the C is, <clears throat> I don't know what the B is. Now there's a formula that we connect C to, uh, no, I'm sorry, that we connect the A squared and the B squared to C with. Do you guys remember that formula? A squared minus B squared. Yes, this one has the A squared minus B squared. And it's always A squared minus the B squared because the A squared for ellipse uh, conics are always bigger. And what does that find? Uh, what is what by? Oh, is that fine? Well, we don't know the B, right? And that's what we need for right here. So we're going to plug in our A squared, which is 25. We don't know our B squared, and we know our C squared. You guys remember how we found our C squared? We counted the distance from the center to the focus point, which was 4, and then we squared it. B is going to be the number that goes underneath the Y squared. Um, B will give you the distance from the center to the co-vertices. So, I subtract 25 from both sides. I get negative B squared equals negative 9. I divide both sides by po negative 1, which will give me a positive B squared and a positive 9. What is B equal? B equals 3. But I don't care about that. I just want the 9. Because I know B squared is supposed to go on, on the, uh, underneath the Y squared. Now just to recap, 
Our major axis is the longer axis. It connects the two vertices. The two vertices are connected by the major axis. The minor axis is the one that goes the other way. And now that we know uh, what b squared is, I know that I'm going to go up one, two, three spaces from my covertice and go down one, two, three spaces from my covertice. So this is a minor axis, this is your major axis. Now you can draw a more accurate ellipse. So to find some of your points, because some of you guys love the formulas, you know what A is, you know what B is, and you know what C is. What's your A? Five. It's 5, because it's half of the major axis. What's the B? 3. three. Um, and we know that one because we found the 9 using this. We take the square root of 9, and we get 3. And we found uh, C to be 4, because that's the distance from the center to the focus point. Alright, let's do this next one right here. These ones aren't that bad because your center is at zero, zero. Your HK is zero, zero. So how do we write this in standard form? Well, it needs to equal one. So how do we um, make that equal to one? So we're going to divide that by 24, and we're going to divide everything else by 24. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do the other side. And so we have one right there. And when we simplify this, we divide the top and the bottom by three, so we get x squared over eight. And when, for this one, we divide the top and the bottom by 6. We get y squared over 4. That's all you have to do. Um, now, I, I want to graph this just, um, just for practice. The center is at the origin. Is it horizontal or is it vertical? It's vertical. How do you know it's vertical? The 8 is bigger than the 4. You're right. The 8 is bigger than the 4, which means that this is your A, right? But isn't x horizontal no. x is horizontal this is your x-axis is your y-axis x goes left and right yes. and because the bigger number is underneath the x then that means we're gonna go left and right with the square root of 8 so it's yeah so a squared equals 8 but what is a equal a equals the square root of 8 which is 2 red 2 in order to graph this, we need to know approximately what 2 red 2 equals. So can you guys punch that into your calculator? I think it's like 2.8 or something like that. That's how you would find that number. So then you could go um, 1, 2.8 is right about there, so that's one vertice. 1, 2.8 is right about there, so that's another vertice. What is, um, okay, my b squared is 4, so what's my b? 2. So now I count up 2, and I count down 2 to find my co-vertices, and I have an ellipse. There's one more thing that we don't have that we need. Focus points. Focus points. To find, you need the focus points. They're important. So I need to know what c squared is. To find c squared, we're going to use the same formula that we did right here, the a squared minus b squared. a squared is 8, b squared is 4, equals c squared. That's a squared, and that's b squared. So, yeah, so we have 4 equals c squared. That means c equals 2. And do we count up and down for that, or do we count left and right? Left and right. Yeah, we count left and right. How do we know? Because it's on the major axis. So there's your focus points.